Welcome to Highline Excel 2013 class video number 33. Hey, if you want to download this workbook for week six, click on the link below the video or go to our class website. Hey, we got to talk about sorting in Excel. Lots of amazing examples. Now, sorting. Most sorting is done on a proper data set. So field names at the top and empty cells all the way around. The sort buttons, home, ribbon, over in editing, there's a drop down for sorting and filtering, escape, the data ribbon, there's the A to Z, that means smallest to biggest, or Z to A, that means biggest to smallest, and there's the sort dialog box. Now, if you want to sort a single column, the big fear for most people when they do this for the first time is, if I sort assembly times, will it sort all the other records perfectly? So to prove to ourselves that sorting does work, we've colored one record, and we're going to come over here, and there's a few ways we can do this. We can simply, with a single cell selected in the column we want to sort, because we have a proper data set, empty cells all the way around, field names at the top, when I click the A to Z, instantly the whole column for times is sorted, but all of the records remain intact. If we wanted to show the biggest at the top, well, of course, we do Z to A. I'm going to click A to Z assembly times. The fastest ones usually are the best. Now, that's a single column. Let's see how to do it with two columns. We want to sort not only the assembly time, but also the employee. Now, our goal here is to sort times within employee or set a different way, sort times for each employee. That means we need two different sorts. If it's employee as the major sort, that means we want all of the Joes together and then all of the Sues together. Once we get all the Joes together here, then there needs to be a bunch of mini sorts in the assembly time column. So all the Joes and then smallest to biggest for Joe, but when it gets to the next employee, it needs to be smallest to biggest again. This is Sorting by two columns, there's two ways we can do it with the buttons or the sort dialog box. So if you're doing it with the buttons, you do major sort last. If you're doing it with the dialog box, you make sure the major sort is on top. So let's see how to do it. Well, if the major sort has to be done last, then I'm going to come over here and first sort this A to Z instantly. And now, because this is sorted, when I sort the second column, the major sort A to Z, it works perfectly. All the Joes are together, and then the times, smallest to biggest. And when it starts at fill, smallest to biggest. Now, if you're using the sort dialog box, I tend to like the uh, buttons. I just click, 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 click until I am at the major sort and do that last. However, with the sort dialog box, some people like the hierarchy of this. So I'm going to click the sort dialog box button, and then you select adding levels after you've completed the sort on the first item. So we'll say, hey, employee, that wants to be our major sort. So I'm going to say values, that's fine, A to Z. Now if I go to add a level, watch what happens. That one is on top, sort by, and then it says then by. So on top, that's the major sort. Now we come here, assembly times values, smallest to largest, and there you go. Click OK. So either way you do it, you get the same result. Now let's do the same thing here. This is a common situation. You have sales and you want them sorted within product. So you want all of the quads, all of the balance, all of the sunshines together, and then a bunch of mini sorts over here. If you're doing the buttons, you just do the major sort last. So I'm going to click in a single cell, A to Z. Oh, wait a second. I want Z to A, biggest ones on top, and then major sort last, and I'll do this one A to Z. So instantly I have all the Bellens, all of the Carlotas, biggest to smallest. Sometimes you have just numbers or you don't have a proper data set, so you have to be careful. And here's why. If you click in a single cell and then do A to Z, what happened to that 23? Let me control Z and do that again. Just watch. The 23, if I click A to Z, is being treated as a field name, control Z. So this is the unsorted data set. One way to deal with this, and this is the way I do it, is I just highlight the, all the numbers I want to sort. So 
I want to force the issue, go up to sort dialog box, and you could see right here, see how it's forcing even when I open the dialog box because it thinks my data has headers. If I uncheck this now, you can see that that's included, and now you can sort smallest to largest. Click OK. All right, now let's go over to S6. Click on S6, and we want to talk about the important sort hierarchy. Now here's how when we click the sort button, the things will be sorted when there's mixed data. Numbers, text, including null text strings, those are considered text, and then logicals, false, true, errors in the order they occur, and then finally empty cells. Also, ASCII characters come into play here. So if you sort text, capital C is considered 67, lowercase c is considered 99. Here's a list of ASCII characters and then their number. So if you scroll down, these are the 255 ASCII characters. Capital A is 65. Oh, and there's our, our capital C, number 67. And let's see, our lowercase c would be 99. You can look through this list if you'd like. Control Home. Here's a column of mixed data. Capital C, cool. Lowercase c, cool. We have number, false, a null text string, double quote, double quote, that will be considered text. Some characters, there's an empty cell, number, errors, and on down. Now we have an empty cell, so if we clicked in a single cell right here and clicked our A to Z, it would only sort that many. So I'm going to force the issue when there's empty cells by highlighting the whole data set, including the field name. And now I'm going to click the A to Z. Now, this empty cell will go to the bottom. Everything else will be exactly in order with this. I'm going to click A to Z. So instantly we get numbers, text, all the way down to there. And then the logicals, the error, and the empty cell. Now I'm going to control Z to undo that. And just to point this out, this empty cell will always go to the bottom regardless if it's A to Z or Z to A. So now when I click Z to A, well now the errors are on top. True, false. So everything's reversed except for the empty cells at the bottom. Now let's go look at some applications for this mixed data situation. Let's go over to S7. Sometimes you have empty cells and you still would like to sort the data set. Let's say in this case, these records I'm not interested. In. Even though they have dollar amounts and invoices, not interested because they don't have a city. I'm going to force the issue and highlight. And now I'm the whole data set, including field names, and go up to the sort dialog box. And now I can simply say sort by city. And then those empty cell records, click OK, will be forced to the bottom. Control Z. Another way to do that is when you highlight it, if you want to use the buttons, make sure your active cell is in the column you want to sort, and then A to Z. So they're sending the empty cells and the associated records to the bottom. Let's go over to S8. Here's a situation. We had we looked at this formula earlier in the class, match. What we have is prospective customers, and here's our master list. Well, we've been working hard to try and get these prospective customers to become customers. Once they're in the master list, I don't want to phone them anymore. So match, it looked up the relative position. Relative position 2, because Deegan is the second item in this list. 10, 5. I'm not interested in the numbers. I'm interested in the NAs. Earlier in the class, we saw how to wrap is NA around match. But you know, you don't really even need to go that far. As long as you run your match and you just want to get these numbered records to the bottom and delete them, just right click sort. Now I want the error on top, so I do Z to A. So notice we're, we can right click Z to A, use this or the buttons, right click Z to A. And just like that, now I can highlight this and Alt E A A to clear or go to home and the eraser clear all formatting and content. So there's sorting with errors. Let's go over to S910. 
And here's a situation that sometimes occurs. You have some names and you just want to sort them randomly. Well, we can use the RAND function. The RAND function generates a random number between 0 and 1 with 15 digits. It is an argumentless function. Close parentheses, control enter, double click and send it down. It is also a volatile function. So if I'm working off to the side, watch this. When I hit enter, watch the numbers, enter. So it's kind of a little bit annoying in that it continually recalculates, but no problem. Let's just say you want to sort. This is a cheap and easy method. Now watch this. If I Z to A or A to Z, it doesn't matter. It'll give me a random sort. Not only that, but because it's volatile, as soon as I sort, the numbers will change. So you actually never will get the, the smallest numbers to the top if you right click sort A to Z, but the names will be randomly sorted. So when I click smallest to largest, instantly I have my random sort. I can copy and paste it somewhere else. Control V. Now, sometimes you want a more permanent solution. So we're going to try and remember back to a bunch of things we learned earlier in class. Here we have our names. We also have our column with the RAND function. And we'd like a formula here that automatically just gives us a randomly sorted list of names. Well, if we remember back in class, we saw the number incrementer, rows. We saw how to use the small function in rows. We saw how to use the match, and we saw how to use index. Now, I've left this here for you to study on your own, but let's build the whole formula here. The first part is I need to look at the rows functions, rows with an S. And I'm sitting in cell D18, so I want to, an expandable range. So D dollar sign 18 colon D18. The 118 is locked, but not the other. How many rows are there? One between 18 and 18. But if I copy this down, you can see that's an expandable range. That'll give me the number 1, 2, 3, 4 as I copy down. Now what I like to do is extract the smallest number and put it on top. Small will help us do that. The array, well, these are the numbers I'm trying to list from smallest to biggest. F4, comma, and there's my number incrementer. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 as I copy it down. Control, enter, double click and send it down. Now, for the moment, this actually is that sorted list up there because this 0 0.06 is right there. So Charles should be on top. But now we have this. Now we put that inside of match to tell me that that's the whatever seventh, that that's the seventh value, F2. And now that's the value inside of match. So the lookup value is simply that. And I want to know what position that smallest number is, comma, the lookup array is this, F4, comma, and then we want exact match zero because those are not sorted. Now I've edited this and the whole column is highlighted to, so to populate, so to populate the edited formula, I hold control and enter. So those are the relative positions. Now I simply use that as the row number inside of index. Index, the array, whoop, these are the numbers, F4. So that whole thing, whoops, no, no, comma. And now that whole thing is just get, give, getting me a random row number to help me extract a random list. Now I have the edited formula, control enter, that is absolutely amazing. So every time I open this, it'll automatically give me a new list, or if I hit the F9 key, automatically giving me a new list each time. All right, let's go scroll over, and we want to look at our next example on sheet 1112. And we want to look at sorting horizontally and sorting by color. All right, so we have some numbers. They're horizontal. We would like smallest to biggest. I'm going to highlight just the numbers, not the row header over here. And it's the sort dialog box that's the trick to this one. Under options, we select left to right. Click OK. Now I can come over here. I'm going to select row 
four and click OK. And just like that, I have sorted my numbers left to right. Now we want to sort by color. I'm going to come down here and we want to use the sort dialog box, but when I click in a single cell and click the sort dialog box, we do want to be uh, careful because we just did sort horizontal, so under options we have to switch it back, sort top to bottom, and I have to make sure to click my data has headers. And now I can simply come to the date. Sort on cell color, and this order will look through the column and give me a list of the color options. I'm going to select red. This is a single sort. I click OK. The red ones are at the top. Now what if we wanted yellow actually sorted below red? No problem. Sort dialog box, add a level. Now we can say date, cell color, and yellow. Click OK. So now the records for red are on the top and the records for yellow are next. What if we wanted to reverse these, knowing how to go back up to the sort dialog box, and there it is, this button up or down. So if I select then buy, I can go up. If I select this one, I can go down. By the way, we've only done two, but you can do many sorts here and order them with these arrows. I'm going to send yellow to the top. That is so cool. Click OK. Instantly, the records for yellow are at the top. Records for red are below. Hey, let's go to our last sort example on sheet S13. Hey, here we want to actually remind ourselves about what we already learned, sort sales within region. Well, if we want sales sorted within region, if we do it with the buttons, I'm going to sort sales Z to A, so the biggest ones are on top. This column is sorted perfectly, so when I sort this one, A to Z, boom, just like that, east sales all the way down to the last east one is the smallest this is important for our next video subtotal feature in order for the subtotal feature to work you have to sort first so in our next uh, video we're actually going to sort sales rep within region now if we go ahead and do that now sort sales rep and then the major sort region the fact that this is already sorted biggest to smallest here. This actually will make it sort sales for each sales rep in each region. Ready? Let's go ahead. A to Z, and then major sort last, A to Z. So you can see sales for chin, exactly perfect. Biggest to smallest for chin within the east. If I go down to Frank's, Biggest to smallest for Franks within the East. All right, uh, next video we'll do sorting and subtotal. All right, see you next video.